We'll take a taxi, eh? Okay, what did you get? 10 more boxes of uh, wine. It's not French, but it's close. And I think there's about 50 or 60 liters of um, a curated collection of boxed wine that you can buy for about $2 in Panama or about $10 in Galapagos and probably $30 in French Polynesia. And so Ian has a very big collection of this one, one of his favorites, and it's not French, but it's close. So that's his dad joke that we all have to indulge him with. Where are we going? We're going to the Marquesas. Where are we leaving? Leaving the Galapagos. Three weeks, hopefully. Big trip. Here we go, Galapagos to the Marquesas. Hopefully only three weeks. How far is it? 3,000 mile. Nautical or? Nautical mile. Nautical Maybe mile. a little over 3,000 mile. Okay. We have electricity, fuel. At the moment. Propane. <laughs> Knock on wood. Uh, what else? Diesel. Diesel. Gasoline, propane, water. Water. Full. Yeah, everything's full. Freezer's full. Fridge is full. Hammock and veg is full. Yeah. And we have a pumpkin. We'll see if we actually eat it, but it was insurance. This is where we're going. This is our girl. <laughs> She's like a, a talisman. She's a talisman. And was she on your last boat? She was not. There was another form of her that was on my last boat, the Hinano girl. Yeah. Hinano beer girl. And you got her where? In French Polynesia. Okay. And this one you got on Amazon? Yes. How was their night last night? Uh, it was nice in one way that I was able to, I was supposed to be in bed from 10 to 6 while I had as the whole night shift, like that's a dream come true. Except the wind kept fluffing around and I had to come up and you know, work on the sails. So because the hydro vane points into the wind and steers us, but then the wind kept shifting. So in a moment's notice we'd be heading in a different direction. Yeah, essentially. 
And then, uh, yeah, but now we've got it all set up. Um, the other question was, uh, oh yeah, solar panels. How are they doing? They're being blocked half the day by those sails you were just talking about. The sun, the sun and the sails are not in the right angle, are they? So even with our jacked up um, 440s, three times 440 solar panels, even with that, we, uh, we're missing the afternoon sun. Yeah, but we're still fine. Have lots of, yeah. I just can't leave the Instapot on for six hours. All day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We are searching for our friend's blue barrel on a sailboat. They were demasted about two days ago. And we're a thousand miles from closest land, 2,000 miles from where they're going. And they rigged a temporary sail. Anyways, we're trying to find them to give them some diesel and some sleeping pills. And they should be somewhere around here and can't find them at the moment. And we're three miles out from getting to Blue Barrel. So that's the boat that was demasted uh, two nights ago. And so the plan is to hand over some jerry cans. We also met another boat, Good Karma, who are just behind us. Uh, so they also have jerry cans to hand over. So it's kind of funny because you just discovered them on the area. Yeah, one? just uh, 45 minutes ago, they yeah, just showed so up. Yeah, so you were looking on AIS because we don't know maybe Barrel's AIS isn't working. It doesn't appear to be working. So you are looking for to check me out. Blue Barrel, if you see another boat, you contact them by radio. So they just kind of trip across this other boat that's now broken. So the two of us are going to come up in the evening. You might not have a lot of light. And we're going to try to do a handover as well as uh, hand over some good luck items because you have an extra one of these. So you're gonna give, give, give one of her to them because they're gonna need all the luck as they try to do 2,000 nautical miles uh, with a vinegar pole and a bed sheet, I'm not sure. I don't know what sail they're using. They, they do have a spinnaker pole as the mast, uh, but I do not know what sail they have as a sail. Um, he seems to be pretty good at navigating and weather. Uh, and yeah, I still don't have a visual. We also, I turned on the, the engine just to, just to get a little more power, just try and get there in light. Uh, I don't know if we're going to, um, but uh, yeah, I still don't have a visual. Yeah. We go to port, or or on your port. And that's off our port bow. Off our port bow. Uh, I have a, I have a visual, yes. Yeah, okay, I guess we'll just get there and see what we see. trying to drive here and figure out you, you guys are doing some speed there like three or four knots okay I'm just going to turn around and come I, I'm getting a hard time doing perspective exactly where you are and how fast you're going here well, I 
think that uh, one thing that we're kind of seeing is that I don't think we can pass through diesel at night like this. So I think that we're going to hang around with you guys for the night. Um, we'll figure out a plan then we're going to sail ahead 30 miles and then leave too. And then you're going to pull to us. Um, but anyways, I'm going to try and do a pass and see, see what it looks like us getting close to you. We can go, you know, at five knots, six knots. I think that's the most comfortable, is it? Just to kind of go. Yeah. Maybe just jib and jigger. Yeah. So no main, so no, nothing, you know. Yeah. If a squall comes up. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. And then heave to at the waypoint. Yeah. diesel on, Ian dumped, uh, dumped the diesel jerry can, which we now know floats. We didn't know that. We didn't know if we thought they might float. And then um, then Alex, uh, the guy, I hauled it in. And so we handed over 40 liters of diesel. And uh, yeah. well, we were very happy that there was no, it had a, lot, a high chance of injury or breakage or something. Yeah trying to pass things between two boats on the open ocean, you know, with the waves throwing you up and down. Yeah, and we even talked about taking a bet on our boat. Yeah, that was one option we were going to take her because she was so anxious. But in the end, it was going to—it was just too dangerous to put a person in the water and try and get them. Yeah, yeah. So during that transfer, we were pretty worried about the line up on the boat and then the boat you know goes up in a wave and it jerks up your head and it causes injury or causes damage so we had he, we got him having slack line on his boat so when we picked it up he, he gave out some slack line so that we weren't worried about it jerking out of our hands but and we certainly line, tied it off quick and yeah. just got it in the water and they didn't have an engine at the moment and so it was just us with an engine and Easily something bad could have happened, or you know, one point Anne almost fell in the water, and uh, and then we were also worried about running over the line that's in the water and getting caught in our prop. And then, you know, now we got a bad thing happening to us. But, yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, very happy that no injuries, no damage, and they got the packages they needed. Yeah. Yeah, you guys will get there. Just take care of each other and take care of yourselves. And, uh, you know, we'll try and check in with you and get other people to check in with you. And yeah, keep the spirits up. And, and you bet you're going to make it. You know, you're in a tough spot right now, but uh, you get some sleep. And, you know, in a few days, you're going to be like, oh, okay, all right, I'm better. You know, that's, <laughs> I'm sure you're going to be better. Yeah, thanks a lot for that.
Yeah, I think you could give that a try. Is, is the other sail about the size of that that uh, that sail you have up? Well, you got time to try it. I would, I would give it a try, and maybe it, maybe it stabilizes you, like you say. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think you got anything to lose in the sense your rig looks pretty stable. Um, but you know, don't, you know, just say, don't get overconfident that it, that, that nothing's going to pull that down. You know, tend, tend to your rig. I'm sure you're going to, but you know, I'm just saying. Yeah, I think so. I'm not good with the trusting rigs. <laughs> well, I'd say like for that shit to happen, you guys have done well and that your boat looks like it's, you know, pretty together. You've got your solar panels, your wind charger, you know, uh, so, you know, yeah, it happened, but I'd say you're about as lucky as you could be if it had to happen. Well, you guys are doing great. 3.8, 4 knots, you know, uh, this, these are nice winds. Uh, you're going kind of downwind. Um, yeah, you know, I, th I think you're doing great. Yeah, and, uh, oh, it's so nice to see you guys. Uh, it's like an I hope your, you know, your spirits get brightened with a little bit of visit and all this action and your extra diesel and uh, some sleeping stuff that I, I'm sure will help you bet. And uh, yeah, I hope that gives you some strength uh, for the next few days and uh, to, you know, feel, feel better about it and all. All right, kids, you're gonna do great. This is, uh, this is it. So when we heard that blue barrel would be masted, it, it was, of course, a given that we would change course and, and go to them. Uh, we had met them in uh, San Cristobal and uh, they had left a day earlier than us. Um, so I assumed that when you lose your mast, you, you abandon ship. But um, when we got another email from them, it, it was clear that they weren't abandoning ship. So at that point I was like, well, peace out then, like have a good time. We're gonna, we're gonna reset our course. And Ian, Ian was just saying, no, like, of course you go and you give moral support, you give diesel, water, food, whatever is needed. Um, so we weren't in agreement um, initially. So, you know, the clips that I had shown, you know, shows us like working together really well. But at the initial decision, like I was, you know, to me, it was putting us at risk to to reset our course, to have the boat go, you know, kind of into the wind. It's going to get slammed around a lot. It ended up taking us two days to get there, um, you know, and then and we were really tired and uh, and I was worried that Ian would start making bad decisions and, uh, you know, or, you know, we'd get hurt and then it would be us. When we got there, I'm so glad that we win. I, uh, yeah, it was it was amazing to see them. They like, were being batten around, and um, you know, when we said goodbye to them, like I couldn't even talk on the radio because I would start crying uh, because I knew they still had like another four weeks of that. And uh, you know, and Sanders really confident. Ian's really confident, but like I was thinking about Yvette and uh, how she'd have to like you know live in that cork on that in that washing machine you know for the next four weeks and uh and I didn't really know if they were would um arrive alive and uh yeah Ian and Sandra were, were quite confident that that the boat was in good shape to make it um um yeah but uh it, it was a good experience. It was a good experience for us too, because um, I, to be honest, I, I wasn't there. It was a moment, I trust Ian in so many different situations, but there was a moment where I was like, I don't think he has our best interest. He's not thinking straight and uh, we're so tired right now. <laughs> and he's making bad decisions, but uh, in the end it all worked out and it was a good decision. And I'm glad we went. 
I just want to congratulate Ian on getting um, this part manufactured in Colombia. This very, very thick bolt. That was that's in our autopilot. Because if this breaks, we wouldn't have had an autopilot. And what do you know? Day nine or seven. Oh, Pacific Crossing. It broke. Like, check this out. This is the Pacific for you, right? It just like. Did it, do you think it wore away or it snapped? It snapped from boom, 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 right. boom, 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 on the ram arm. And, uh, so we had these high, like, these, you know, rolling waves, and it's always trying to correct her position. Yeah. And then, bam, snaps. So Ian has two others of these. So now we have our backup in there, and we have a backup of a backup. That's right. We have this, a spare in there and a spare still. Yeah, so this this is an homage, just thank you, because you know how much I love the autopilot. Yes. The food on the trip has been amazing, and the provisioning has been stupendous. We have uh, had lots of food. I'm actually going to take a good request to have less beef. Oh. Like, <laughs> we've been having beef, beef, beef lately. And, uh, today I made... Let's do some chicken. Today I, made, so chicken. And I, today I think I've... I've, I've caught up enough sleep. We kind of lost, did not sleep those two nights chasing those guys. Yeah, it was, it was, it was rough. But um, I think I got some sleep last night. I may throw in a fishing line today, see if we can get some fresh okay. dorado or tuna or wahoo or something. Yeah, so we'll have chicken and or fish. <laughs> yeah, but Quite anyways, the, the, uh, the supplies have been great. Yeah. Uh, and I've been very, very happy. So that's, that's day eight. So we'll see day 20. I think we're day nine. Day nine. So we'll see day 20. We'll do the same interview just to make sure. We ran out of coffee. We <laughs> no, didn't have no, enough. We did not have enough. So who are these guys? Roadkill. They were on the <laughs> boat. This. They were on the deck of the boat this morning. Uh, so it's still pretty fresh. And I'm going to clean them up and eat them. Huh. This guy uh, did his big uh, his ink, ink. ink shot. From the boat? On the That's, boat. Okay. There's a mess on the deck. Yeah. So they have the largest eye of any animal to body weight. Yeah. It's a huge. Nice. Nice. So you just take off his head. Guts. Somewhere. Somewhere in there is a plastic backbone. Oh, that's part of it, like a piece of plastic. It's smaller than this guy. Cool, so that's his backbone. Yeah. Here's the head and the big eyes, and then somewhere in here he's got this beak that I kind of pull out. is like a hard little clawy beak. Gross. But they use the tentacles to feed the, bring the prey to their beak. Yeah. Right. Well, it's right in here. This is where, yeah. where it was. Yeah. So clean this up, cut off the eyes and eat it. Fry it? Fry it up. Okay. <laughs> and voila. Voila. Fresh squid. Cool. So these, these two guys sacrifice themselves onto our deck. In the middle of the night. Yeah. At some point. So that I could, we could have some breakfast. Nice. Okay. Dig in. I want to see how chewy. Did you cook them just right? Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Those ones. Look how dangerous that looks. Yeah. Yummy, yummy. Big leader. And Swivel. And then we got some thick old line there. So this is. There's the line out. These are our shock absorbers. Thumbs up. Okay. So if a fish bites, these take the initial pull.
So that's our line, and then our little thing to help us know when we get one. It's a handy clothes peg. So when that pulls, the clothes peg goes flying, and we know we have a big dorado. Excellent. Okay. Let's do it. Bon chance. Three and a half pounds. All right, there's one fillet. You look a bit windblown. <laughs> Action. Action. Oops. Okay, so this one. January 2021. So we bought this over a year ago. Cassoulet. It's my favorite. And then from and this traveling one. through Africa 30 years ago with some French guys through Zaire, they had cassoulet in their car that they had driven from Europe down to East Africa. And that's where I was introduced to it. I loved it. We found this in St. Martin a year ago, and I've been saving it for a special occasion. Well, actually, well, January 2021. Yeah, so quite a while ago. And so it's um, white bean, what is it? We got white beans, we've got some sausage, we got some duck. There's a lot of goodness in there. And, what, and what's the special occasion today? That there's just a lot of beef around, and we're going to <laughs> change something different to eat. Well, what else and is that today? you don't have to cook. But then also today is... Oh, uh, and we're halfway. Yeah. We're, tonight we're going to be halfway. Yes. 3,045 miles. We are going to be passing 1,522 or something like okay. that tonight sometime. So, cassoulet, halfway. I'm going to sleep. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. Look at that. My favorite time of day, just waking up, getting a coffee, and chilling out, watching the sunrise. This is like just the beginning. So we've got the motor going. 
we've got less than 10 knots of wind. No, we got 10 to 14, but it's just up and down and we want to hold our sails. So that's why we've been motoring, but can't motor all the way. We still got a thousand miles. So got to try and get the spinnaker out today and try some, and listen to some flopping sails if we have to. What do we got? We got 983 miles to go. Okay. How's the morale? Uh, it's coming along. Yeah. <laughs> that's been good. This wind is annoying. We've had such a nice wind and now we don't have nice wind and we've got floppy sails, which is why we motored all night. A good lecture? It's one of my dirty shirts that I wear during passage. I don't want to wear any nice shirts because then I wreck them. Alright, it's true. And leftover castellet. Second part two. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And uh, I got hit with a new new episode of seasickness yesterday. No no explanation. Maybe the waves? Maybe not. Today I have coffee and popcorn. Yeah. I may have vomited in the compost bin a little bit. The new addition, which I'll show, is the um, padding across the front of the stove. Oh yeah. So that's beneficial on your skinny hips as yeah. you slam into the stove yeah. when a roadway comes along. We have still lots of coffee, lots of magic. cargo ship that we didn't see <laughs> and on the AIS they're like we're right beside each other so it's like seven in the morning this is like our first big boat yeah wait see <laughs> we're back to collide oh yeah so where did they show up just recently I guess they're going pretty fast need to alter course <laughs> stand down but if we kind of somehow speed up a bit we I think we can make it Friday so we put up the main sail which we haven't been using that much and who knew we gained like a knot knot and a half <laughs> fancy that eh on a sailboat yeah but but we have been doing quite conservative sailing with our sail plan yeah because one of our friends was demasted and everybody seems to be having problems with sails ripping and lines breaking and so we've just been going nice and slow but to try and get us there Friday in the daytime one less night of watch we've picked it up a bit 
and uh, right now, knock on wood, I believe we're going to make it in in daylight on Friday. Ooh, Is that blood comfort. up there? There, there might be blood up there. Yeah, there's blood up there. It's probably from... The two Dorados uh, we caught yesterday afternoon. Yeah, and whose blood would that be? The Dorados blood. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> there was also an injury. There was a fish hook caught in my wrist right here. Yeah, so can you Less explain what happened? Because I was whacking him on the head trying to kill him. He was flapping around and this Rapala hook I have with all these little hooks on it just went and then, my thing. <laughs> and of course, there's a barb in there and it's flapping around. <laughs> Anyways, we got it out. Little pot in the sun. Yeah, <laughs> do you want to see your bump? <laughs> I don't know if I can put that on YouTube, so yeah. it's not loud. I think it's just boobs that aren't allowed. Yeah, Nipples, okay. but bums are okay. <laughs> are you imitating my interview style? Maybe. It seems uh, like you're knitting. Yeah, I'm knitting a sweater. It's wool I brought. I bought during the pandemic, actually the start of the pandemic. And I uh, didn't know what I was going to make with it. So I've just kind of made up a hoodie. And I cut this open and put a zipper in. And maybe for Kai, I think. And so it's my first time making a hood. So we'll see, we'll see how it fits. It's a bit of a gap. Have you been knitting the whole trip? No. This time's where I was too tired and a little bit nauseous. I didn't want to knit. But knitting is like the first step up. And after that is reading, which I haven't done at all. Making some ramen with professional ramen. Three packages of goodies in it. That's what I'm talking about. Advanced ramen. <laughs> sure. One more sleep to go, we hope. Get there <laughs> safely, timely, and nothing broke. Pacific broken. crossing, there is no such thing as a There's not any crossing. It's, uh, it's a, a boat that has an engine. So we have all the sails up and the engine on. And if we can manage 6.2 knots average for the next 36 hours, we'll arrive there. Just in daylight. Just in the day. So we're trying to go a little faster at 6.2, so we're not yeah. that so close. Yeah. You can also see in the background there that our boat speed is 5.7, 5.72. That's how fast the boat's going, but there's about a one knot current, so... We rock the current, man. Yeah, the it's current the is taking us along. In the right direction. out some land there. Exciting? Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't think we could make it. Well, I thought we could make it. But, <laughs> but uh, I thought we were never going to arrive. It's a long, it's a long trip. We're not yeah. there yet, but at least we're in sight of the land.
eggs are you weak yeah so these volcanic islands and polynesian culture it's amazing yeah and this has been sort of the goal of the whole time was to get here yeah getting here and uh loving it and i've shaved as well yeah and no mustache no mustache yeah um yeah so i don't really know how to end it we're down. happy to be here and i love you <laughs>